Charles Anderson, a Michigan police officer, was discovered to have KKK memorabilia in his home and on display and was recently fired. Here to give us more insight on this story is Onyx News correspondent Dr. U.A. Thompson. Dr. Thompson, it perplexes me time and time again that this is still a topic that we have to revisit. KKK memorabilia on display in 2019. You know, I just wonder if we'll ever get past it. Yeah, Nietzsche, this is a troubling story and it's, it's saddening uh, to consistently hear about this type of stuff going on across our country. It brings me back to the same drum that I always beat. We have to deal with race issues in America once and for all. This story is horrendous. Uh, when you think about it, the storyline is as such to where this house was on the market and uh, an African-American family uh, went with their realtor uh, showing interest in this home, gets inside and notices the memorabilia uh, that marks uh, the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, they take pictures, uh, the young man shares it on social media without revealing uh, whose uh, memorabilia it is. Uh, someone identifies uh, this memorabilia as having belonged to one of the officers and uh, identifies him, so which, which lets me know that there was knowledge of this type of behavior of this officer within the community, but yet he was still able to wear a badge and a gun. Uh, th this is a troubling story uh, in and of itself because we consistently have to deal with this in our communities uh, of color. And it is, it is just saddening, it's disheartening, and I think we, we, must, we must band together to send strong messages that these types of practices, this type of behavior will not be allowed to continue and perpetuate itself within American society because it is definitely destroying the fabric of our society. You know, uh, once social media grabs a hold of something, they start digging. And in this particular scenario, Absolutely. they dug a little deeper and found out that he had a situation with an unarmed person in 2009. Is that something that's gonna come back to bite him now? Well, uh, according to the storyline, in 2009, he shot and killed an unarmed 23-year-old black man, uh, which now, th that he was ultimately exonerated from, but uh, which now comes to play because of what has just transpired with this uh, Ku Klux Klan memorabilia being in his home. Uh, obviously, this man has some deep-seated issues within, has some serious hate and disregard and disdain for people of color. So now we're able through the investigation to go back and look at that and see if that was in fact a, 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 a uh, process that, that should have been uh, basically uh, metered out with impunity. Uh, and I, I, I hope that these prosecutors go back and look at that and they bring some charges against this young man for, for uh, having shot and killed this unarmed black man in 2009 of which he was exonerated from. You know, uh, the thing that's interesting here is that we have a cop who seemed to be trigger happy in 2009 are we doing anything? Is there anything in place where we can vet police officers who have a history, who have KK memorabilia? Is there any process in place to vet these people before they put them on the street, on our streets, and with a gun and a holster? Well, I think each uh, law enforcement agency have a different criteria for vetting the various personnel who uh, make application to become law enforcement officials. However, I think there needs to be some type of federal mandate uh, that we uh, examine the past of these uh, officers and potential officers uh, before hiring them and putting them on the street because we're seeing an outbreak of trigger sensitive cops who are consistently killing unarmed black men and white uh, black men and uh, black women on the streets of America uh, and, and, and getting him, doing it with impunity. And I think this is just uh, speaking to the larger issue that we have some serious race relations prop, race relation problems in America that we must address, we must deal with once and for all. Uh, you know, what's concerning to me though, Nietzsche, above and beyond this is how many other officers whose houses we haven't got to go in, 
who have this same sentiment, who have these same uh, memorabilia inside, who put on a badge and holster up with a gun and go out and patrol our streets every day that we don't know about. Therefore, there needs to be some type of federal mandate, federal law requiring that all law enforcement agencies go back into the past of these deputies uh, and police officers before deputizing them and before empowering them with a badge and a gun uh, and putting them on the streets because our community is consistently losing at the hand of trigger sensitive cops and we cannot allow that to continue to perpetuate itself within the 21st century. We must speak loud and we must speak clear that we're not any longer going to tolerate innocent black boys and girls and young men and young women being killed on the streets and the officers get off uh, with impunity. We, we will not accept that, we will not tolerate it and we have to speak with a unified voice. We are definitely in a position to make a change. And this is no different than any other opportunity to make a change. And Dr. U.A. Thompson, as always, thank you for awesome reporting. Thank you for being here.